Hi, Shani Fannies. Welcome to Educating Shani. I'm Shani and I'm recovering from an eating disorder. Hi, Shani. Hi. Welcome to another episode of Trigger Food Tuesday. This is going to be unedited because, duh. And also, um, I just want to welcome those of you that are new here. Welcome to my channel. I'm Shani. I talk about mental health, eating disorders. I also do stupid, silly things and attempt to sing and things like that. So, it's really cool here and for those of you that don't understand this series um, that are kind of having a hard time grasping why I'm doing this um, I am a recovering bulimic I have been um, recovered for seven months <laughs> um, over seven months actually and in my recovery I've had to very very slowly like introduce um, trigger foods into my life and keep it down because for me my bulimia started at 13 14 and so the last time I held a lot of these foods down was before that. So um, it's important for me to show, um, you know, my growth in this and my experience and how what has helped me get through eating disorder recovery, which is like one of the hardest things in the world to do. Um, <clears throat> and also it's to show you guys that it's okay to eat and it's okay to enjoy what you want to enjoy. And depending on what kind of food it is, do it in moderation and just listen to your body and and yeah, so, but for me, um, I had decided, like, it kind of started like, okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to just focus on getting my body used to keeping food down. And then I'll work on, once that happens, then I'll wor worry more about, you know, what's in the food and what I, you know what I mean? But I don't know what I'm saying. But anyway, um, so that's what I did. And it's helped me a lot. And so... That's why I'm doing this. It's not to trigger anybody. It's to face your triggers. And I hope that you guys will face yours with me. So, all right. So cereal was one of my triggers. I've already eaten cereal for the first time and kept it down for the first time on a live stream a few weeks ago. But so many of you said cereal. Um, and this is your series too. Like I'm also going to be eating what you guys tell me to eat. That's a trigger food for you. I'm going to drink some milk. Even though I hate drinking milk, my mouth is really dry. I hate drinking milk, it's so gross. Um, don't know what I was saying. Let's get started. Okay, I wanna warn you, trigger warning, huge trigger warning. I pour the milk before the cereal. And I'll tell you why. So we're just gonna start with a little bit of milk. Let's just do like that much, just to start with. And then if I feel like I want more, and my tummy can handle more, then I'll eat more. And that's how it works. Um, all right, so I pour the milk first. I know I'm the only person on planet Earth. People hate me for They don't literally, but like people tease me for it and think that I'm crazy, but listen to my reasoning, okay? If you pour the milk first and then you pour the cereal just one layer at a time, so just one layer of cereal at a time, your cereal's gonna be crunchy on every bite, crunchy and sweet. Some cereals I pour the milk last if I want them to be soggy. Like there are some cereals that I do like to be soggy, it's like Frosted Mini Wheats, I like those to be soggy. I don't know, but a lot of like the, the sugary, fruity stuff that just has like a, a small coat of sugar on the outside of it and it gets soggy really fast, this is the stuff that's the reason and it's already open because I already ate some so it's really delicious anyway so that's what I do and just watch every bite is going to be full of flavor and sweet and crunchy and all the things so don't knock it till you try it y'all okay so anyway. all right so I'm gonna go and look at my comments from last week and by the way for next week's trigger food Tuesday let me comment what you would want to see me eat Fruity Pebbles are so good. Oh, someone specific requested this. Crap, now I forget who it was. Maybe I'll find it as I'm reading. Um, mm -mm. Hold on, I gotta slow down. This This is not how fast I eat, hold on. It's important to me to savor each bite for many reasons. Mm. 
it forces you to listen to your body better and it forces you to enjoy and savor each bite I don't like a ton of milk if you can't tell already pour an even smaller layer next time so I can eat slower. Um, yeah, it's really important. Let your body catch up. You know, eat really slowly. Your body will catch up easier. Because if you eat really, really fast, um, your, your body doesn't register it yet. And so it will all at once, but later and it will, and you'll feel so full and so guilty um, whereas if you eat it really slow, you can kind of assess how you're feeling as you're eating instead of just like shoving it in your mouth and then it not catching up to your s stomach quite yet until 20 minutes later and then you feel sick and you want to throw up and it's the worst. So it's important to eat slow in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, Aether, Aether. I don't know, said my binging food was any type of cereal or granola. It was bad. I used to eat the whole box. Someone specifically said Fruity Pebbles. If I don't find who said that, will you please put it in the comments? Because you're the one that I decided to do this for. And I should have screenshotted it. I'll be I'll get better at that. That's the other thing. I'm trying to um I'm trying to um intro wait, what was I gonna say? Crap, I just lost my train of thought. Never mind. Okay, never mind. Um, mm -hmm. see Annie Frias says um, eating slow is really good they said but I eat real fast especially when I'm alone eating I just want to get rid of the moment and move on uh, do you are you, do you like throw it up like what do you mean because Danny's like that too Danny doesn't have an eating disorder but he hates eating he doesn't hate it, but like he thinks it's a waste of time. When there's work to be done and stuff to be done, he kind of thinks it's just a waste of time. And so he does that too. Like he scarfs it down. My brother does that too. But my brother loves food. <laughs> no way you understood that. But my brother loves food, loves to eat. But he also eats really fast and gets so full. Um, okay. Hmm. Okay. JFX Gore says, question, is it bad that although I know bulimia is bad for me, if it means that I can get skinny, I will, I will, I will still do it. Do you have any advice on wanting to get better? Okay. You know, um, Sorry, it's kind of like a mukbang. Like, I'm going to be chewing half the time. So, sorry about that. Also, I'm wearing glasses because I've been crying a lot. And my eyes are very swollen. Um, so, just ignore it. I should have explained that at the beginning. Okay. Is it bad that although I know bulimia is bad for me, if it means that I can get skinny, I will still do it. Of course that's bad. It's, of course that's bad. Um, but that's one of the tricks of Ed that he plays on us and tells us that it doesn't like anything, not, nothing is worse or nothing is worth, um, anything if you're not skinny. And so even having good health isn't worth it if you're not skinny. Right. But it is, and he's wrong and yes, that's bad. And Someday you said, do you have any advice on wanting to get better? I would advise you strongly to start getting better before you got to the point that I got to because I almost died. I should be dead. I'm guaranteed that I would have been dead in March of this year had I not stopped in January. Um, do it before you get all of the, all of the consequences that I did, before you lose all your teeth, before 
you get a bajillion health problems before you lose the ability to poop on your own. And by the way, bulimia um, doesn't make you skinny a lot of the time. Most bulimics are not skinny. Most anorexics are skinny, but most bulimics are not skinny. Um, I'm living proof. Hello, exhibit A. Like, either maintaining this weight or bigger or, you know, like, yeah, I lost like five pounds at first when I first did it, but that's just because my body wasn't used to it, but then it got used to it. And then, because you're not even throwing up everything you think you are, and you're not. You're not throwing up every single piece of food. Why am I talking about that? That's not what my answer is. My answer is that you got to find something in your life that matters so much to you that you will give up something that is so bad for you. It's that simple. Like, find whatever that is. For me, it's Danny is my number one. And then my family. And then you guys. Like, you guys are my reason. And just find a reason, any reason, any reason, whatever it is. Ask yourself. And if you're like, oh, I don't have friends. I don't have family. Oh, okay, well, then why, have you, why are you here? What's your purpose in life? So many people will come on my live streams and stuff and just be like, they'll just be like, I just lost my train of thought again. Crap, this sucks when I can't edit this. <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. <sighs> Do it for other people. Oh, just find whatever your reason is. And even if you feel like you don't have friends or family, well, then find what is the reason. There's got to be a reason because you're here. And so what's the reason that you're here? Because most of us with eating disorders have had suicidal thoughts, right? A lot of us have attempted or at least contemplated. So what was it that kept you here for that? Whatever that reason is that keeps you here on earth, that's the reason that you use to fight your eating disorder as well. Is the frame crooked this whole time? That's like really annoying. Sorry. Oh, well. Um, don't give up please keep fighting I swear to you it is extremely worth it I swear in so many ways and it's not easy it's hard I'm sicker than I've ever been and right now I've got Ed in my ear being like oh my gosh your health problems were so much not as bad when you were like throwing up all the time so you might as well just do that again and I'm like no I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna fall for that Ed I know your tricks I've been there I've done that I'm not gonna do that again so dumbass okay Okay. Weeping Willows 21 says, Shani, don't worry that you can't tell us yet. Miscarriages are personal and private, and you need to do it in your own time. It's, it's even okay if you never tell us. Next week's question, what are a few of your reasons that keep you in recovery? Like I just said, Danny, my family, you guys. Also, I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to like explain a little more why I thought I was going to die back in January, the, why I was convinced I'd be dead by March had I not stopped. It got to a point for me that every time I purged, um, I started, my body started going into what I would imagine shock feels like almost, or on the verge of a heart attack or something because my whole body start shaking like I could not hold still and all my blood would start boiling and then going freezing hot cold hot cold my heart would be like beating out of my chest my head was so inflamed inside and dizzy and um my face would go like completely ghost white my lips would go white um I just literally felt like I was gonna die I don't know how else to explain it I, I was positive that I was gonna die every single time I did it and as much as Ed has told me and I've told myself throughout the years that I want to die, I don't. I don't think anybody does. It is not in your human nature to want to die. 
We are built a certain way for a reason. There's a reason. Like, imagine if you're, if something crazy happens, like if you're at the store and something, something in the store, this is a horrible example, by the way. (laughs) Okay, let's pick something else then. Well, imagine, no, that's not, that's stupid too. Just imagine you're at the store and you're, the aisle next to the aisle where they sell oil for cars and gas and there's an accidental explosion and you're in the next aisle, what's your first instinct going to be? Is it going to be to jump in or is it going to be to run or or duck or hide? That split second, you don't have time to think about it. I guarantee you would run. That was the stupidest example I've ever, that's the stupidest metaphor I've ever come up with. But you know what I mean? It's just in our nature to um, to not want to die. So keep that in mind and yeah, use that. Um, let's see. Babies, my baby. Um, that crunchy sweet bite every time I'm telling you. It's worth it. Um, forget what I was saying. Okay, update on how I'm doing. Um, I was thinking about. <laughs> I've been crying a lot. Um, and my mom, I finally opened up a little bit to her one night. She called, or I called her, and, um, I told her that I need to talk to somebody, like a therapist or something. She's like, what's going on? You can talk to me too. What's going on? That's going to get soggy. That's okay. Um, what's going on? And I told her that I told her what was going on. I'm still not ready to say it out loud. And she, like, I told her everything that was going on and every symptom I was having and stuff. And she's like, have you ever stopped to think that maybe you have postpartum depression? And I was like, no, is that possible? She's like, yeah, you can get postpartum even if you miscarry, because those hormones are still, you know, coming in and out, and so you're still going to be affected by it that way. Ever since she told me that, I will say, it's gotten easier. It's gotten more of like a, okay, I know this will pass someday. Like, before it was like, is it going to be like this forever? Am I going to be this depressed forever? Um, I don't know, because it's the unknown for me. And when she said that, it was like, oh, it sucks but I do know that someday it will end and so that's cool and that's something to hold on to you know what I mean um so that's kind of where I'm at I'm grieving crying every day uh crying to Danny crying to my mom I'm looking for an online therapist right now um Yeah. And Danny's okay. He's kind of been losing himself in work. Um, Sorry, I'm looking for another question. Just while I finish this. Mm-hmm. Hannah Dean says, mindfulness. That's what it is, savoring the food 
and taking it slow is mindfulness. So like I'm starting to feel satisfied, so I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna finish this a little bit, and then I'm done. Is the thought crossing my mind to eat more and throw it up? Absolutely. I'm not going to. Okay, I'm bringing it in closer now. All right, um, so I hope this helped somebody. Um, look, eating disorder recovery is such a tricky thing. It's so hard to deal with because um, our addiction is something that we have to have every day. So I say this all the time and I mean it. Like I never mean to trivialize alcoholics or drug addicts, but they can live without alcohol and survive. They can live without drugs and survive. We can't live without our addiction or else we will die. So we have to face our addiction every day, all day throughout the day. So, um, so I get it. Like I know how hard it is and it took me 30 years to, <laughs> You know, I mean, I haven't been trying for 30 years, but I've had an eating disorder for 30 years and getting better has been a pain in my asshole to the niles of the deepest crevice in my asshole that you can imagine where you find like the old dried up black poop and blood and, and it comes out and you're like, oh my gosh, am I dying? Why does it look like tar? Am I dying? And then you're like, no. I don't know what I was talking about. Never mind. I just lost my train of thought. Shocking. Anyway, either way, just be patient with yourself. It takes time. All of it takes time and patience and just, again, find one little thing that can motivate you and stick with that thing. Think about in the past one thing that has helped you to get past a rough spot. What was that one thing? And you can pretty much guarantee that that will help you again. So... I don't know. I'm a big believer in God and prayer. I don't know if you are, but um, that's something that's helped me a lot throughout my entire life, and that's been my constant throughout my entire life, um, and it always will be. So find whatever it is for you. I am also so lucky to have so many wonderful friends and family, and and um, I just feel so, so lucky and so grateful. Um, to have that many wonderful people in my life. Um, and if I didn't have all of you guys, I will say, yeah, it would be a lot harder. And so I know a lot of you out there come to me and you're like, hey, I'm lonely, I have nobody, I have no family, no friends. And I'll just be like, well, you have yourself and you have God. And while I mean that, um, I can't imagine what it feels like to be completely alone with no people in your life. However, Again, you can always invite people in. If you don't have a family, make a new family. Family can be anything. Family is someone who loves you and is there for you unconditionally. And also just, it's true that you can rely on yourself and you can rely on your higher power until you can build what, whatever life you're dreaming of and whatever you want for yourself. You know what I mean? I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, just hang in there. And we'll all get through this together. Leave me some questions for next week. There weren't very many questions this time. Leave me questions and then also leave me your trigger food. And I'll, again, pick one and eat it for you slash with you next week. So if you, if one of your trigger food is cereal, go rewatch this. Or if you're already doing it, hopefully you're already eating a bowl of cereal with me once you saw the title. So, and guys, look, I'm alive. I don't feel like I'm going to die. I don't feel full. I don't feel like I need to purge because I didn't eat enough to feel that much. I ate until my stomach was like, that's perfect. That's, that's what your body wants right now. You can stop now. You can do it too. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Remember forever and always that you're beautiful. You are worth it. And I am too. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs> love you guys.